you know, styles for Capture One are often, um, you know, they're dismissed almost like uh, presets. I don't need presets. Presets are useless for me. I don't care about, you know, a bunch of just random things that won't work on my images, etc. And I thought the same thing. You know, I was the same way about Lightroom presets as I was about Capture One styles and their presets as well. And this is why when I made my own, I simply made them based off my workflow and what I thought would speed things up a little bit. So let me walk you through it real quick. So here's an example. Here's a shot. It's unedited, right? So what I always do is let me just start with my white balance and exposure, right? Before I jump into any type of styles or presets or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hit that white background and <clears throat> see if I get, you know, meh, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. So I'm going to adjust my white balance just a bit here just to get it something that I think might work for me. And I kind of like that and I might brighten it a bit. Maybe, maybe there, maybe a little bit more. Okay, cool. Something like that. Now, the way I built the styles um, are kind of like procedural, right? So let's look at this one. We have MVP base, okay? So a couple of things that I normally do if I have a horizontal shot, you know, um, where my subject is laying down or just sideways in some manner, then I might stretch it horizontally and I might stretch it vertically. That's very common for me. It's kind of my style. And I have it there automatically ready to go. And the reason why this folder of styles is called base, because these apply to the background layer. Now, you know, Capture One does allow you to save styles with layers, right, automatically. But here, these actions give you the choice because I think you need to decide where you want to use them. The next folders of styles in this procedural kind of thing um, are supposed to be used in different layers so you can adjust things, right? So we're going to have our layers palette at the ready. All right. So dynamics one, two, and three. See, this is how I like to work these things. This is um dynamic range kind of compression, right? It brings down highlights, brings up shadows, and you can choose a little bit, a lot, or a lot more. Very quickly, you know, yes, you can do this with the sliders, of course, but here we have a little tab open, dynamics one, two, and three. Most of them get the job done for me. I'm going to choose two. And then noise, if you want to add a little texture noise, sometimes I do. In this case, I'm not going to. Now, vignette is just three different levels of vignette really quickly to either get an idea of how it looks or choose one. Now, in this case, I want it light and bright, so I'm not going to do that. Now, I'll go close MVP base and I'll go to the layers. I'll go to skin prep. So we have the balancer. This has everything to do with choosing, you know, skin tone uniformity. And when you first add it, I recommend that you hold down control or right click, right? And say apply to new layer. And on that layer, we go to our adjuster. We'll see the skin tone layer. There we go. Let's get to it. Skin tone. And if it's a little bit yellow like it is, then I'll just adjust it to a little bit more warmth. There we go. And I see I have quite a bit of uniformity here because I chose level three. But that's okay though, because even though I had to get the tone where I wanted it, instead of adjusting a bunch of sliders, I can just adjust the opacity and that'll kind of tone down how much of that sort of balancing it's doing, right? Okay, so I got that layer. We have deep orange. This is necessary in my world anyway for lots of, um, you know, especially spray tans that are a little too intense. Sometimes I'll jump one, of the, jump one of those on there and then we can deepen the skin in three levels very, very quickly. So I think I'll use this one, just a very light deepening of the skin just a bit. Put the opacity a little less on that one. See where we're going with this. And then we go to the grades prep. We want to do a little bit of a pre-grade or oh, we don't have to. We can just kind of get a basic idea, get some toning. Don't really want any of those. We have some creative grades that might be cool for us. And of course, you can tweak these as you like. And that's why I like I really enjoy applying to a new layer and then I can take that down. I'm going to start with a low, low opacity on that one. I'll play with it later. I'm building my layer stack here, similar to Photoshop. OK, boost blue. If I want the jeans to be a little stronger, I can choose that. Right. Just very subtle. But I do like that. So I'm going to go with it. Add that. I can boost the highlights if I want. I can boost the shadows. And yeah, the highlight pop is kind of nice. I think I'm going to go with that. Tone that down just a hair. There we go. We have D blue. If we really want to get rid of the blue. It's pretty common for some looks, but not for this. I can cool things off and warm them up ever so slightly, but I'm not going to. OK, and then we have some finalizing ones like boosting contrast if we need to either a little or a lot, which I'm going to do a little. And then we have our compressor, which kind of compresses everything in a linear fashion to kind of give everything a smoother look, which I'm going to pick that. See? All right. So very, very quickly, and even with me talking to you about it, I've given it a polished sort of look. It's got the skin a little more balanced in the hue. I've got a little bit of, uh, you know, HDR, if you will, not real HDR, but dynamic range compensation. The blues are a little bit popped, etc., etc. And we went from this to this. Now you can do all these in the individual tools. 
But by doing it like this in layers, it's very quick and I can adjust on the fly. So uh, my highlights, I need them stronger. I need them less. And then my boosting blue, I don't want it that much boost. Um, the creative grade, maybe I'll add a little more on the creative grade. All right, cool. Compressor is fine. It's okay. Maybe the contrast is too strong. Tone that down. There we go. See how easy that is? And then if I have another shot, let me go ahead and just kind of reset this one. One second. New variant. So I have this shot. And here's the one I just did with all my layers. I can just take those layers and apply them over. See, now I didn't adjust the uh, the oh, white balance and the you know the brightness of all that, the exposure. Let me fix all of that. But you see where this is going. That's the entire premise of this: is to make it to where you can make thing, you can change things in a very organic way. Yeah, there's cool key commands all over here, Capture One that you can use for all kinds of things, and you can be very very efficient. But to me, this efficiency is not just about. Um, not just about being fast, but about having some creative exploration. There you go. Now the white balance is balanced. Come over here can brighten this a bit. There we go. Now we have both of them with these cool layered looks and having the layers palette float open like this instead of tucked away into all the others, you know, nested away in the other tools. is Very, very important to me. And that's why I created these styles, because it's important to me to be able to create and, you know, excuse me, be creative quickly and explore things these are the normal things i do would i do things beyond this of course sometimes i will sometimes i do less but i like these tools available to me quickly so i can then adjust opacity on the fly or turn them on and off never mind the blue thing let's move on and i have it all here on this little palette instead of digging through other tools it's a preference thing but i found it worked really really well and it's helped my efficiency big time when it comes to my raw processing, right? Especially when I have a vision in my head of what I need. Again, I can add other layers on top of this. I can work the background differently if I have different visions, but I love this approach, this modular approach to using styles. I thought it made sense to me and I've been using it ever since I made it, right? So anyway, check those out. If you want, go to the website. You can see video, more videos about them as well. Um, give them a chance. You know, I think that Presets and styles sometimes get a bad rap and there's a lot of useless ones out there. I'd like to think that our MVP ones are useful. I, I know I use them every day when, when I do my raw prep. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. Any questions, leave a comment below or nbp at ninobatista.com. We always love to hear from you.